The answer to today's question is completely insane, and the reason why is because of this guy and his beliefs, Mr. Himmler. Who, which is the first time I think I've actually spoken about Himmler, but I'm going to try and explain his reasoning, aka insanity. So, great question, and it's asked by So Long John. Something pretty disturbing has been happening. Whenever there is a video on YouTube about foreign volunteers in the German army, people go on a binge in the comment section claiming the German army of World War II was the most diverse army in history, and stuff like that. This seems pretty absurd even compared to other World War II armies. While the Nazis did have units comprised of other ethnic groups, mostly from Scandinavia and the Low Countries, their numbers seem far lower than on the Allied side, especially the ones that possessed colonies. And the Red Army deployed well over 10 million Ukrainians, Armenians, Tatars, Uzbeks, etc, etc. Most of the foreign volunteers in the German Army and SS, from what I've read, were actually Volksdeutsche, ethnic Germans. Often the people claiming this are using it to argue that National Socialism isn't racism or xenophobic, just racially conscious. They take the Free Arabian Legion as an example of non-whites fighting for Hitler, ignoring it was a complete one-off understrength unit that never saw combat against the Western Allies, and compared to tens of thousands of Arab colonial troops that fought the Germans in Italy, for example, and played a major role in the breakthrough at Monte Cassino, it's really not significant. They ignore racially motivated killings, not just the Holocaust, but murder of war prisoners. Uh, Third SS Totenkopf, for example, murdered many captured Arab colonial troops near Cambrai in May 1940 and black GIs were often killed after being captured by the Germans, and this is to say nothing of the mistreatment of Soviet POWs you've covered in your videos. Even compared to the other Axis powers, this claim of diversity doesn't seem to hold true. During the defense of Okinawa, more than half of the Japanese force was actually made up of Okinawan conscripts. Other Asians were forced into Japanese uniform on a regular basis, and the Japanese even formed the Indian National Army to fight against the British Raj. The Italians recruited troops from Africa and the Balkans on a regular basis, and on the Eastern Front had a Cossack volunteer unit called Gruppo Autonomo Kozaki Savoya. I've gathered all this from just a few weeks of research, but I'd like to hear from someone more authoritative on this subject. Do you also think this claim of diversity is widely exaggerated? And regardless, is it any counter-argument whatsoever to National Socialism being racist? Thank you. Yes, you're right to be skeptical of the narrative that these people are pushing because Nazi ideology is racist through and through. That's the whole point of the ideology. Um, what I'm about to give you is an answer which, for some parts of it, you're going to think there's no way this is true. If you have any doubts, or think that I'm making stuff up, which some people will claim, uh, please read the book Hitler's Foreign Executioners, which, John, I recommend you read, because this is the best book I found on this topic, and it's probably the only one that actually explains the ideological reasoning for why they did it. The others say, yes, there is a reason why, but it's more practical, but they don't actually explain the justification for it. This book explains the justification for what they did and why they recruited non-Germans into the German, uh, well, Waffen SS. So if you're in doubt or if you want to know more about this subject, this is the book that I recommend for you. So what we have to remember is that Hitler was against the idea of recruiting non-Germans and arming them. Uh, he says this in, I think it's Mein Kampf in his second book. He also said it throughout the war. And in fact, he actually calls the uh, battalions, some of the battalions that were raised, like the Muslim battalions uh, in uh, in North Africa, he calls them a joke, right? He actually thinks it's a joke and he, he actually laughs at it. Uh, so Hitler is against the idea of it, but Himmler is for the idea of it. And I think this is important because Nazi ideology basically says these these Eastern peoples and these, you know, non-Germans, especially, you know, people of different skin colours, Nazi ideology says these guys are inferiors, they are untermentioned, they are meant to be the slaves of the Nazis. So, okay, yes, they need manpower, which is the traditional explanation for it. Yes, they need manpower, so they had to arm these other 
uh, non-German races. So, okay, that's that's the practical reason or practical explanation for it. But what was the ideological explanation, right? So as so, so long John says, it's like the Nazis are now claiming that, oh no, they're not actually racist. They are racially conscious because, you know, they were able to recruit these guys. That explanation doesn't even fit either. Because what's interesting is that over half of the 910,000 men that fought for the WAF and SS were non-German. So as one author makes clear, okay, yes, some of the purely German, purely Aryan divisions may have been elite, but somewhere in the region of about half of the WAF and SS units were not elite at all. Uh, especially when you consider a lot were just police units, uh, etc. So yeah, it's hard to argue that the SS as a whole was this elite fighting force by the end of the war. Yeah, maybe in 1940-41, etc. That area, yeah, okay, you could claim, make the claim that the Waffen SS was an elite force. But by the time you get to 1944-45, that's no longer the case. And I think that's interesting because why would Himmler dilute the strength of his elite uh, private army, supposedly? Uh, why would he do that and just recruit non-Aryans. It doesn't make any sense at first glance, especially when you consider Nazi ideology. So let me explain. The German Nazis did not actually believe in the German race. They believed in the Nordic race. Um, the German race, actually a subspecies, uh, was a subspecies of the Nordic race. So in actuality, when the Germans are like, oh, the German race, when the Nazis are saying that, they're actually incorrect. It's the Nordic race. And this all goes back to the race pope. The race pope. Told you, you weren't going to believe me. Uh, so Gunter the race pope, whose books were very popular at the time, uh, were read by Hitler, Himmler, Goebbels, etc. I think as far as I'm aware, everybody uh, who was a high-ranking Nazi all read the race pope's texts and they believed that the nordic race was the aryan race the germans the austrians etc these were subspecies of the uh, the nordic race uh, and there were different tiers in that so if you were volksdeutscher which is people living outside of the normal german lands uh, there were actually tiers and if you were the top tier you were just you were full german if you were bottom tier you were basically uh, Jewish, you know, they were seen as like criminals or something. So there were different tiers, and there were different tiers inside Germany as well. But uh, in theory, the the Nordic race is the best race, and everybody wants to be part of it. Supposedly, uh, then you have different races. That, uh, you had the Western race, which is like France and Britain. You had Southern races and Balkan races, and I'm not even going to get into it. Uh, and then the Eastern races as well. And all these are in a sort of tier. Uh, for the most part. It, later in the war it changes, but for the most part it is in a tier-like format. So when we have like a situation in 1939-40 where the Germans conquer the, you know, the uh, western part of Poland, they conquer the west, they conquer Norway and Denmark, um, they can get recruits from Denmark, Norway, even Holland, which they considered to be part of, sort of part of the Reich. Holland's uh, economic border was actually abolished and was reinstated in 1944 when everything was collapsing because they thought that the, the Netherlands was for some reason close to the Nordic race or was perhaps part of the Nordic race, but the Belgians weren't, they were more French. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, uh, so that's how they do it. But then Hit, uh, Himmler was like, well, you know, we can recruit from uh, Scandinavia because they're part of the Nordic race. So this is why you get the Nordland division, uh, which was one of the first. Uh, and you also get the Westland division because the Western race wasn't seen as too inferior to the Nordic race. And so they were able to draw some people from that. Uh, and they were able to justify that by saying, well you know, okay, the Western race might be inferior, but certain people in the Western race will probably be more Germanic or more Nordic, so therefore they can recruit from the West. So that's kind of justifiable. So you get the Westland division, and you get uh, divisions like that. So up to this point, it's not too bad, not too bad. 
Um, and there was also Volksdeutsche. These were people outside of uh, the normal areas of Germany. They were called back to the Reich. Uh, Heim ins Reich, I think is the phrase that Hitler used to, f to get them back to the Reich. And again, they were in tears, but the best of them could also be recruited. And there was something like 13 million Volksdeutsche. So there was a bit of a pool there. Um, but, but even so, by the time Operation Barbarossa begins, Himmler only has an army of about 91,000 troops-ish uh, at that point. So it's the SS is pretty small at this point, plus the Einsatz grouping and whatever else. Um, but the priority is always the army, because they're at war. They need to make sure the army is fully stocked. So the Wehrmacht got the priority, and Himmler was having to draw upon, you know what he could get you know maybe the cream of the crop but he was only allowed certain amounts of uh, manpower so he was he, up to this point there's a uh, a crisis of manpower for the ss when operation barbarossa begins the and hitler calls a crusade against bolshevism and and judeo bolshevism this then incites the whole of europe because europe was fearing throughout the 20s and 30s was fearing uh, the Marxist Bolshevik regime in the East. So this then calls up a lot of recruits and that helps uh, temporarily the manpower crisis for the SS. But even still, there's a, a shortage. What they do is they capture somewhere in the region of about 3 million Soviet POWs. I've covered this before in a previous video. Uh, they capture around 3 million. They starve them all to death or most of them to death. And it was during this process that uh, this guy is a professor from the Wilhelm Institute University. He goes with a team of uh, geneticists, I think they were classified as, basically people who were Nazis who were trying to measure noses and take blood samples and figure out how inferior these um, Soviet peoples were. Because the Soviet Union obviously has uh, lots of people. They have Baltic people, uh, you know, Ukrainians, Tartars... Tartars, uh, you know, even Mongolians, Siberians, they have a whole swath of different races, supposedly. And so these Nazi scientists or pseudoscientists were there trying to figure out, okay, just how inferior these peoples were and, you know, take samples, etc., etc. So they did that. Uh, and what they found, or what they discovered, supposedly, was that the these supposedly untermention weren't quite as untermentioned as they had originally thought. So what they concluded was that some of these Eastern peoples had clearly been infected or injected, had an injection of Germanic blood. And they said that in the past, Germans must have conquered to the East or Nordics must have conquered to the East and interbred with the local people. And so some elements of Aryan blood was in the Eastern peoples. And this then was turned into what was known as uh, pools of Aryan blood or pools of Germanic type blood that were in the East. For example, there was the, Vol there was the Volga Germans uh, they also thought that the Estonians, because this is the thing, when I did the Curlin series, I was like, okay, why the why do the Estonians get a division? Why do the Latvians get a division? But the Lithuanians didn't get a division. I couldn't figure that out. Well, it turns out the reason why is because they thought Estonians were the best of the Baltic people. They had been not, I guess, conquered, but they were, they had been injected, the Aryan blood had been injected into the Estonian people, supposedly, during the conquests of that, I think Teutonic Knights and uh, Sweden, etc., had conquered the Baltics. So they were seen as mostly Aryan, not not fully Aryan, but they were mostly Aryan. So they were perhaps it's justifiable to have these people as uh, part of the Waffen SS, supposedly, or they weren't as bad. Latvians were not as good as the Estonians, but they were okay. And then he got to the Lithuanians, and the German, the Nazis considered the. Lithuanians as Polonized. Uh, that was the term they used. So Poland and Lithuania were seen as not so not so great. That's the reason why Estonia got divisions 
and Latvia got divisions, but Lithuanians didn't. Although there was some regiments, I believe, uh, police regiments. So that's the reason why. Um, now, again, why did they recruit... I mean, okay, fair enough, maybe with the Estonians they might have got away with it, but even still, these people, even in the Baltic, are not seen as part of the Nordic race. So why did Himmler, or how did Himmler justify recruiting the Baltic peoples? Well, because of this pools of Germanic blood or Aryan blood in areas in the east, right? And this is also why they go to... To, to Tibet to see if how far Germanic blood had gone. Because of these pools of, of supposed Aryan blood, Himmler comes to the conclusion, okay, I, I hope you're sitting down for this one, you know, because what I've said so far is complete insanity, but it's going to get worse. So Himmler comes to the conclusion that if these Eastern peoples are partly Aryan or have traces of Aryanism in them, then they have... Uh, the racial soul of the Aryan people. Um, but it's a weak soul, so, or, you know, certain individuals might have certain Aryanness of them, but not others might not do. So the only way to, you know, the, the best way what, what the Nazis thought was what we can do is extract or harvest these Aryan souls and bring them back to the Reich, okay? So they're actually going to, like vampires, they're going to drain the Aryanness out of the Eastern peoples, what, what remains of it, and thus make the Reich even more Aryan than it was before, uh, and bring these racial souls back to the Reich. And I'm not making this up. That's exactly what he said. Now, Yes, we have the race pope. Yes, we have racial souls. However, I do actually think there's a reasoning. There's actually a bit of reasoning here. Um, because what Himmler said was, okay, if these Easterny people who are supposedly partly Aryan fight for the Waffen SS, then he says that the, those that die, their souls will live on in their comrades who fought for the Waffen SS. And so as a result, the, the race that they are fighting for... So let's say they got a bunch of Tartars, Tartars uh, and they fought for the Waffen-SS. And let's say they recruited 10,000 of them and 5,000 died. The racial souls of those who died would go to the, to the people that still survive and thus they would be more pure... And thus, the 5,000 that survive will be more Aryan as a result. So as a result, they are actually harvesting and they're purifying the peoples of the East. They're purifying the blood. Uh, and this is how he justified it. Um, I actually think, though, while there is some sort of religious spirituality here, or whatever you want to call it, pseudo-religion spirituality going on with the, the SS, I think the practical reasoning is that... In theory, if you if you had a romantic view of warfare, obviously this is not how it works, but if you had a romantic view of warfare, you would consider that, okay, the weaker people, the weaker warriors would die in combat, and so you'd be left with the superior warriors. Well, in Nazi ideology, the superior warriors are more Aryan than, you know, they're better, they're, they're, they're tougher people, the smarter, etc., etc. They are superior to the people who died obviously so again that's not how combat works because a bullet can just kill you and you could be the fittest human in the universe a bullet can kill you so that does that's not how it works but the you know if you think about it as a romantic way of looking at it it makes sense that yeah if the weaker people die they must have been inferior supposedly than the stronger more Aryan people so Himmler's kind of looking at this as a grand scheme of things and thinking, well, if the inferior people die, those with better blood, those with the Aryan blood, uh, will be more Aryan. So we are purifying the, the races of the East, right? So that's how he justifies it. He's, it's, not, it's not because they weren't racist, as some of the, um, the people claim, or they're just racially conscious, no, there's racism built into the whole thing. They believe that they are purifying the blood of the inferior peoples by extracting the racial souls 
the racial souls <laughs> uh, of the of the Eastern peoples, and then also applying that to the Bosnian Muslims and the the Arabs and whatever else, they are again getting the cream of the crop and they are extracting the racial souls from these people. So this idea, okay, yeah, they're, they're not actually racist. <laughs> no, they are completely racist. It, I mean, none of this makes any sense anyway. There's a racial pope, there's racial souls. They're extracting the racial souls. I mean, I, I'm talking gibberish at this moment in time. You know, it's absolute insanity. For So for somebody to say, oh no, it's not racism. I'm sorry, no, absolutely not. Of course it's racism. Um, but yeah, I, I was reading this, I was reading this and going, this is absolutely insane, but it's kind of like, actually, no, if you take Nazi ideology to its logical conclusion, yeah, this actually, I mean, I'm not saying it makes sense, but it, it makes sense in terms of Nazi ideology, but obviously for this to happen, you have to believe that there are races to begin with, which there aren't, uh, everybody's an individual, obviously, but not to the Nazis, um, and you have to believe in racial blood and racial souls and God knows what else. It, it's just silly, but that's why they, that's how they justify it. So it's definitely, definitely not, oh, because the Nazis were diverse and so on. It, the, the racism is built into it. So you cannot claim that the Nazis weren't racist because they recruited other races it, it was a tier system. They were trying to purify the blood. There's no way you can claim that. What's also interesting, I found out in the um, in the research for this. So I assumed that Volksdeutsche would be treated the same as uh, normal Germans or whatever. Uh, you know, if they were of tier one category or something. Turns out that's not actually the case. Volksdeutsche were actually looked down upon by other Germans. And technically, Hitler is a Volksdeutscher as well, which is interesting. Um, so, what ends up happening is, if you look into the Holocaust or anything like that, a lot of the camp guards in the ghettos and the concentration camps and so on, a lot of the camp guards are actually Volksdeutscher. And the reason why is because these guys were basically getting looked down upon and bullied by the regular German, Aryan, whatever. Uh, and so they felt like they were, you know, they had a chip on the shoulder and they wanted to prove their Aryanness. And they would do that by taking out their frustration and their anger upon the inmates of these camps and the ghettos. So the reason why a lot of the camp guards are actually just brutal and you know, you know, the absolutely, they're just insane. The reason why is because a lot of them were actually Volksdeutsche. They may have been commanded by a German, you know, commandor or whatever, but a lot of the guys who are actually there beating up people and whatever else, they were in fact um, not pure Germans. And that's the reason why. So they had a chip on the shoulder. And a lot of cases when it comes to the non-German people who were trying to um, appease their German masters, they are also the same. So if we take Croatia, for example, the uh, the regime there recruited a bunch of uh, brutes, there's no other way to put it, and committed crimes of unimaginable horror, um, to say the least. So... The reason why is because, well, again, Croatia had a slightly different view of it. They thought Bosnian Muslims were the purest race. Okay, whatever. <laughs> uh, and so they were trying to please their German masters at the same time as do what they were, thought was right, which was killing Serbians and so on. So... And then the Germans actually looked upon Croatia and was like, wow, these guys are insane. Because they had a chip on the shoulder and trying to prove that they were, you know, oh, we can kill more people than you. So that proves that we're somehow more Aryan or something. I don't know. I don't know how that works. But that was the logic that they used. And even the Germans were shocked at how brutal the Croatians were in their regime. Um, 
because they actually thought, well, there's a way, you know, the Germans, this is how cynical they got. The Germans were like, no, there's a proper way to do mass murder. And these Croatians are not, not doing the proper way of mass murdering, right? Because that's how that works. So the, the Germans were more civilized with their mass murder, supposedly, according to the Waffen SS. Uh, not that that's much to go on. So, yeah, th this idea of, oh, there's racial tears and, you know, it has racism built into it. Uh, as part and parcel of the thing. So there's no way you can claim, oh, it's because they were diverse, right? You know, and I'm not I'm not saying that what happened in the West, you know, uh, Americans had, you know, you had the, the white Americans, you had the black Americans, and this is before the civil rights movement. So, yeah, okay, America's inherently racist. Britain is inherently racist, obviously. Uh, there are other racisms going on in the West and in the East. Uh, the uh, the Soviets were against the Chetniks. Ch Chetniks? Yeah. Uh, Chechens. So it's not like okay, there's there's no racism outside of Germany. Of course there is. It's you know it, it's an era of racism. But even the Western racism doesn't come anywhere near the the racism built into the Third Reich, and that makes sense anyway because Nazi ideology is just racism through and through. So to claim that oh yeah. It, you know, they were more diverse than the West or whatever. No, that, that doesn't that doesn't stand up to scrutiny, I'm afraid. That doesn't stand up to scrutiny. So yeah, that's the that's technically the reason, or at least the reason that I've got so far. If you want more information and more detail, uh, Hitler's uh, Foreign Executioners seems to be the best book on the topic. The other books don't really explain it very well that I've read, and I can't find any others that dispute what the author says in this one. So I'm going with that. Um, but I'll be interested to hear your thoughts on this one because this is a wit. Himmler's insane. Uh, there's more than this. Uh, you, some of the stuff that Himmler says is absolutely, absolute insanity. Um, but racial souls, racial pope. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just horrors of racial magnitude. Um, yeah, insanity.